back here. Okay, we're okay, we're back. And we're back. <laughs> so for years, when people asked Foundry why we didn't live stream, we said it's because our internet was not good enough, and uh, we kind of see that right now. We're still there. <laughs> yeah. Still there. So I had to re had to restart things, streaming off of uh, my phone, and what that looks like. Uh, but we want to talk about what it means for us to reopen worship at Foundry. Many of you know that the governor allowed churches to start going back with a lot of social distancing guidelines this past Sunday. Uh, you know, I was aware of this conversation for a long, long time. But what did you feel like when you saw these guidelines pop up? Well, first of all, it's very rigorous to look at all the guidelines that have in place. Yeah. I understand it. I agree with the, the reopening. But I think that that term is a little bit confusing. Yeah. Everything that happens, it's not a true reopening because of all the stipulations that we had to do that uh, we could not, in traditional sense, reopen the church. Yeah, and I, th I mean, I think that what a lot of folks see is, um, you know, uh, churches are reopening, so what does that mean? Uh, and, and, and I just, I might be falsely assuming that everyone who goes to church is aware of what these things are, but I realize it's probably not the case. No, I think that the most people might even just see reopen and think that everything's back to the way that it was yeah. without digging into the weeds, which is where we have to, to mm -hmm. live when yeah. it comes to things like this. Yeah. yeah. So, no, I don't think everybody's aware of it, uh, besides the fact they see reopen and they just oh, like, let's I mean, just reopen. So we see, oh, we're used to social distancing, so we're used to the idea of, oh, okay, um, I need to be uh, uh, six feet apart. Well, as long as my family can stay six feet apart, uh, what you really have going on is the beginning point of that is a calculation you look at your square footage, and you divide that square footage by 60, and that determines your your 25% uh, uh, occupancy rate. They, uh, 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 from what I understand, I'm bad at math, but Rapids Parish School. Understand. Public school, school Parish Public School. Yeah, heck yeah. Cool. Yeah. Social distance yeah. is fun. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah. Um, they pretty much every person needs to have 60 square foot of space in the building, and so in our capacity, we're sitting here right now in this video set that we've built out. Uh, in the Fellowship Hall of St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, where Foundry's met for the last couple of years. And um, our capacity in this space, complete capacity, is under the 25% guidelines, is 50 people. And that's just, that's not counting the fact they want you to have uh, uh, as a minimum aisle width. And then also, what do you do if you have a family of two? That's a pretty easy family to see, right? Your family, there's three people in your family, right? Like that's easy to see. But you know, if you got five people in your family, six people in your family, uh, re realistically, when you also you got to count me, you've got to count the person running sound, you got to count all these other people. When you really get down into it, the likelihood of this room actually can seat about 35 people, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, yeah. If we're lucky. Um, and there's there's a lot of other stuff that's going on. So Foundry decided last Sunday to not meet. Right. weekly um, and you know phase two hopefully is coming down the road and uh, there's an assumption that with that they'll increase your occupancy to 50 percent so you could say well we could hold 100 people in here which is getting us kind of close to Sunday uh, Sunday but that also factor in there's one way in the building the the this is not I mean, we would be packed tight into this room. sure well and that's also square footage wise if this was an empty building yeah, and it's not. It's not. It's not. We have a lot of things going on, so we start getting six foot guidelines with that. Yeah, your area starts shrinking even more. Yeah, like there's not like to get into the restrooms here. There's not. Um, you don't have six feet of leeway. Correct. At all. So we're we're kind of getting the weeds here to let you know these are the decisions that not just our church with me and pastor our staff and leaders like Kay, but like if you go to church somewhere else and you might be wondering like why are we not meeting right now. Uh, this is this is why. I mean, it's it's a, it's a pretty complicated reality. Uh, last week, and we also like at Foundry, we t we uh, released a survey almost a month ago now, I guess, yes. to start off with, just gauging where where our congregation is. And we found a lot of things interesting. We found that a lot of people were ready for things to reopen. They were ready for stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. We also found that people have a wide amount of anxiety over over COVID nineteen. Sure, and they're seeing that. You get people who really don't aren't worried about that much at all. You got people who are really, really worried about it. You got people like me who probably should be more worried about it because of my pre-existing health conditions. Agree. And it's just we're just across yeah. the board right there. Um, but we also saw that people had a really wide berth of where they were when they felt like they would be safe meeting in groups of under fifty. Um, and that's that's true. And that's all the information that we had to take. You know, when the board met and with leadership with St. Andrews, and we started kicking ideas around. 
And what we came to realize that even though we have the guidelines for church reopening, we're not there yet. Yeah. But what this also does afford us the opportunity to do is look at other areas. Because even though we're not meeting in person, my family's been at church every Sunday yeah. since this whole pandemic has started. Yeah. So we're still meeting. It's just in a bigger realm of things. Yeah. And it kind of ties back into the principle that church is not the four walls here at Wesley Hall. Yeah. Church is out there. And so Foundry as a church is still meeting. Yeah. We're just not underneath the roof here at Wesley Hall. Yeah. So we're looking now, where do we go? Yeah. What do we do? How do we do this? How do we yeah. get, you know, past this as a group, as a church, you know, as family units, as individuals, as Foundry? Yeah. And it's allowed us to kind of broaden the horizon of our thoughts yeah. when it comes to Foundry and the direction we're going to take the yeah. church for the for just the short time. Yeah. Hopefully the short time being. Well, and it's like one of the things that I felt like since the beginning is you know, to kind of a little bit of like insider stuff, like among pastors and ministry leaders, you always ask yourself that question. If your church couldn't meet on Sunday morning, how are you still the church? And that was a theoretical question for years. So it's just kind of, it was a way that you just kind of kicked a ball around of what ifs. Nobody ever thought that was going to be an actual, real, legitimate question that I would say 90% of American churches had to deal with of what that looks like. And the funny thing is, Foundry has grown through this. Like in the in many of the ways we can put um, just kind of put pens in the board, we realize in spite of not gathering physically as a as a whole group on Sunday morning, we've managed to grow throughout this process. And we also think back to our mission um, that we've had since the very beginning, creating environments for people to experience a God big enough for all their needs. And we see that you know, unlike any other time in the, in the history of our church that we have a season to experiment in what meets people's needs and what allows us to reach new people. And we realize that this is a short season that we will never have again, probably, ever. Hopefully. 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 Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a table, but knock on. But yeah. Um, Like, we don't know. So we don't want to waste what might be six weeks, eight weeks of... We have an ability now to do things that we never would have had before. Sure. Absolutely. And so how do we continue to grow? I know as a church, we've always been strategic. As a church, we've always sought to be innovative. We've always sought to just kind of be pushing the boundaries of what does it mean to be a church and to reach folks. And we still have the ability to do that. Um, and one of the we, we can do that, A, because we've stayed healthy through this because of you and your generosity and your support in a myriad of ways we've been able to stay healthy. But we also now look at what we could be lamenting over is the fact that the the space that we're meeting in currently is borrowed space. is not big enough for us to be safe. You might be able to hear the construction noise behind us to where our new sanctuary that will seat 275 people is being built. But we've got this season, so what do we do? And our board met last week, and we talked about this. And I'll be um, we came into it with this. My wife uh, told me this quote that she heard from someone is, that said, I'm not necessarily worried about making the perfect decision or the best decision. I don't want to make the worst decision. And we kind of started from there. And as a pastor, what was great for me was to watch uh, 10 of our board members just play kickball around what does it mean for us to reopen. And we, I I, I did not expect for us to come to where we were. I was coming into it with like, okay, we might have to have church like six times a weekend. Right. Um, I mean, you saw the look on my face. Absolutely. Yeah. You were exhausted before the meeting ever started. Yeah, I was. Yeah. And then we, we, but we left that meeting with just a really, really cool idea that I'm excited about. I'm like Kate kind of talk about just this idea that came up out of him uh, and Adrian Mahon and a handful of other people. Uh, you know, Hope Morgan, uh, Ben Stokes, just some of our board members that came up with this really fun idea that actually sounds more foundry than anything else. Well, and we've always done things outside of the norm. Yeah. You know, so yes, there might be churches reopening. Are they rolling the dice? I think so. Yeah. And uh, so we were like, what can we do? And I, I want to say it was Amanda Martin, but yeah. don't hold me to that. Yeah. So we're like, what about pop-up church? And we're like, tell us more. So we started talking, well, what if we just showed up, you know, on our church campus, not inside the building, it's completely outdoor. And the first thing that popped in my mind was, you know, if you've ever gone to like a tent revival, yeah. you know, with a grandparent or something back in the day, yeah. similar to what we can experience here. Yeah. Well, we can bring everybody together. We can still social distance. We can be apart. So we're together yeah. as a church more than we are on a live stream on Sundays. Yeah. But we can come in and we can do it. We can have music. We can get together. Yeah. We can, you know, virtually high five people. Yeah. And we're like, this is a great idea. 
yeah. that we can do moving forward. Yeah. So we decided that in lieu of other things, we're going to continue doing the live stream, or we're going to start doing these pop-up services. Yeah. And finding the places, you know, some of them, like we're having one Friday evening up here at our church, uh, at, our, at our property, and our parking lot that will probably be torn up three days after that. Sure. Because also another part of this decision making was us realizing that um, our timeline for our new building could actually be shortened a little bit if we were willing to say we don't need the parking lot for a few Sundays. Sure. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it, it kind of affects that decision. But also, do we want this new building two weeks sooner or three weeks sooner? There, there's all sorts of things that can come into play. But also finding other places around Washita Parish that we can safely. And that was a lot of it also was us making the decision that instead of breaking up into three different groups of people or four groups of people. What does it mean for us to find innovative ways that the whole church can be together yes. um, in, a, in a safe way? And that's kind of also part of it is we realize we got folks that are very hyper aware of this. They have pre-existing health conditions. We want to make sure what we do caters to the highest level of concern. So instead of asking these people who have, and a lot of them have very legitimate reasons to be concerned because of, because of health, because of exposure, because of family members, these sorts of things, Instead of asking them and just kind of almost de-honoring who they are as a people to instead say, we're going to try to find a way to do the biggest thing with the most group of people in the ways that keeps these folks who have the most concern to where they feel like they can participate. Absolutely. And be part of them. I think that is the premise of everything that we're trying to do. Yeah. Reach the most people. You yeah. know, Chad hit on it. When we're watching the live stream on Sunday mornings and I'm, I'm seeing the feed coming through, who's there? It's awesome to see my sister and her husband in New Orleans yeah. tapped in our live stream. Yeah. So we have to continue reaching people, not only with inside our, our church we have now, but yeah. there's a lot of opportunity now. And is there going to be some sort of revival coming out of this? I yeah. hope so. Yeah. I mean, we see it. So yeah. We're seeing our numbers go up, and we're not even meeting. Yeah. So this is going to afford us the opportunity for something different, Yeah. but it's also much needed for everybody to have that connection yeah. without that being in space. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is on these weeks where we have pop-ups, and we're going to shoot for every other week. We're going to see how that works. We're not going to, on the weeks where we have pop-ups, and uh, now we also talked about really trying for our pop-ups to not be Sunday morning events. Correct. Just to see, you know, I mean, that's, wh what does it mean? I mean, there's, I got, I've been referring to this whole thing as Corona Land. And it's Corona Apocalypse. Corona Apocalypse. Like, there's no rules in Corona Land. Like, who says your church has to be at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning? I mean, right. Well, who said? Who would have said six months ago? Hey, your church is not going to meet physically for three months. I mean, I, nobody would have believed them for that. Um, that sort of thing. Um, and so we're also to take this short season, six eight weeks, and to say, hey, let's experiment like we will never have the ability. So we're doing Friday night. So in weeks where we have pop ups, those will typically not be. They can be any time. That's just kind of the way we decide. They can be any time. It's a pop up. It's a pop up. It's a pop up. And so I mean, so we're, yeah, it's pop up. So on those Sunday mornings, what we're going to do is a couple things. That if that pop up is the type of environment where um, I might or somebody else might be sharing a message, um, we will replay that pop up event on Sunday morning as part of our stream, just like normal. Uh, but like this Sunday, I, 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 I'm sharing a message about lament and what biblical lament is and why that's important for us. Uh, we're going to run that on Sunday morning, and then probably Sunday afternoon, barring we're still working at the technological kinks of all this. Sunday afternoon, we'll probably replay the pop-up sure. event. Yep. And because we're going to have worship and a time of prayer, we're also going to honor uh, the graduates that we have in the church because we've got a lot of graduates to honor. So take this time to celebrate stuff as a family uh, and to do these things together um, with that steady goal of, you know, we want to reach people. We want to honor who Jesus is. We want to prayerfully engage the Holy Spirit and what that means. And we're going to take the things that we used to think were essential, and we're going to move those it's all changed. It's all. There's, there's, there's no. We're able to rewrite. Yeah. The direction that we want to go. Yeah. And this is the first step to it, in my opinion. It is. And we'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. This is not. Uh, it's not permanent. Absolutely. This is. This is us saying we've got a season to experiment to learn what future yeah. ministries we might add in the future to continue our vision of Jesus big enough Absolutely. and our mission of creating environments for people experiencing God big enough for all their needs. Because we realize, you know, Sunday morning might not fit everybody's needs. No. And in the past, it would be incredibly hard for us to experiment otherwise, whereas now we've got a chance for a short season of time to just do that. Um, and so the biggest thing that we're going to ask, and I'm gonna, when we get off this live stream, I'm going to pop this down in the comments, is we do have a, a specific volunteer need during this. 
um, because of the government, uh, the, the, the state fire marshals asks and those sorts of things, you know, it's going to take a lot of people to make this happen. And if you're, if you feel like you really, really, really want to get back in church, the best thing that you can do is actually say, hey, I'm willing to assist sure. making this happen for other people. Like our technical ministry has been pretty much managed by my wife, Brian Wilhite, his wife, Kim Wilhite, for the last several years, just those three people. And we need to almost triple that team size Absolutely. in order to do this well. And we, we, we want to train you, we want to share those things. And so I'm going to pop a link down there to a sign-up and information form. So if you go to Foundry or you don't go to Foundry, you're watching and saying, wow, I, I really want to be part of what they have going on because it sounds different. Um, I encourage you to go through that link and just go through that stuff, sign up. One of our team will be in contact with you quick. But uh, – uh, Kate is somebody who's uh, just a leader in the church, works in a different industry. He's got a son kind of at a critical age for what church looks like. This is a big thing to you and your, your family. Like, what does this mean, or what are you excited about for these next couple of months while we're still living in the time of corona? I think that it's, for me, it's really the same thing I've been looking forward to the whole time. Yeah. You know, just not only for myself to continue to grow, but for Preston to continue to grow, for my wife, for us to grow as a family, to see our church you know, flourish. So for the next two months, it's us doing whatever it takes to make sure the family is moving forward yeah. and not moving backwards. Yeah. And this, in my opinion, the things we're doing, the conversations we're having are helping us move forward during this time. Yeah. You know, my ask would be if anybody has a, a question, a comment, an idea, share it because yeah. the best idea that is never brought to our attention never existed. Yeah. Exactly. So we would not have had this board meeting and kicked around these pop-up ideas and other things. It probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And so, you know, going forward, just keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all trudging through this together. Yeah. We're making it. Is it, you know, the best of times and the worst of times? Yes. Yeah. But we're not alone in this. You know, mm -hmm. the church is going to just do great things because we continue taking one step at a time, yeah. not, you yeah. know, worried about what everybody else is saying. Yeah. And moving and going. And that's the thing about faithfulness. You know, faithfulness is really just us having the ability to position ourselves in the presence of God in a way that we are hearing and engaging and interacting with Him. Yeah. And when He puts something in front of us, us just simply saying yes. And that being the guidelines that we are kind of choosing to move uh, throughout the world with. Mm -hmm. Not not what our preconceived notions are, but what might Jesus be inviting me into and what can my obedience in that ask bring me to in life that is larger than my own current abilities and expectations. And I really think that us moving forward in this regard is us saying, Jesus, we are opening ourselves up. We are making ourselves available to you in a way that we never have before because we feel you calling us to this. This is part of our, our larger just mission as the church which we've had since day one. But then also for this unique season saying we want to be obedient and we're willing to do really whatever, especially to kind of throw the playbook out for a hot minute. And I'm excited about when the time comes, hopefully in several months, when that new building is done and we have the capacity to begin meeting in a way that does seem a little bit more familiar. I don't want to say normal anymore or, I don't think or go back exists. because yeah. normal doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but for us to begin to moving into new ways of familiarity and for people who might be hearing this and saying, Chad, I'm kind of nervous about what's going on. Listen, we're going to have church on Sunday mornings again. Like, we're going to physically gather on Sunday mornings again. But what new things might we learn through this? And so, just excited. This is a great church that's always willing to just just say, what if, what if, what if, and believe in the what ifs that Jesus might be giving us. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Well, Kate, thanks for jumping on. Kate was like, why am I doing this today, Chad? I said, well, you know this. You understand this. I do. And if you've, if you've heard me before, I mean, you know, once you open yourself up to volunteerism with Chad Brooks, you just show up. Yep. You do it's uh, I'm not. A lot of it. Well, uh, thank you all so much for tuning in this. We're going to pop that link down there. It's been awesome having you all on as part of this. And um, just we hope to see you Friday night, 6 p.m., worship and prayer. Pop up with us. Pop up with us. Yeah. Pop up with us. Thanks. We'll see you all later. See you all later. Have a good one.